Okay, so I'll introduce myself in a little bit, but we're going to get through this activity first. Now that you guys have hopefully come up with 10, even though I know none of you, or maybe not any of did anyone actually get to 10 ideas? Raise your hand if you did. Yeah. <laughs> hey, good job. Um, okay, so now I want you to look at the ideas that you did come up with and choose your top three. Hopefully you at least came up with three. So circle your top three that you think are the coolest, best ideas that you are most interested in, um, that you like the most. So circle your top three. I'll give you like literally four seconds for that. It shouldn't take that long. All right, so now that you've chosen your top three, raise your hand if you think that in the next five years, you'll actually do all three of those ideas. Maybe if I really wanted to, I probably could. <laughs> but will you? No. <laughs> all right, so why don't you think you'll do those top five ideas? I'll pick on you since you talked. Oh, I'm, just, I'm just lazy. Or top three. I just put them all. Like, That's it? You just like don't want to do them? Yeah. Okay, so now. <laughs> uh, for one of the three ideas which you pick, write down five things, like little things that you can do in the next week. So if it's like, you know, like a programming side project, then like a new tech stack, like go find like a good tutorial. Like that's item number one. Or if you want to start a club, you know, look up what uh, students union's rules are about like club formation. If you want to like, like, uh, private company, talk, like find potential customers that you can just have like a call with. So write down five things you can do within the next week to like incrementally move forward one of the ideas. Yeah, one thing could like literally be a Google search. So I'll stop putting you guys through the pain of actually doing work at a, at a talk, but thank you for humoring us. Um, I'll let Ram take it away first. Uh, so I'm Ram. I am a third year computer science chair at Laurier. I'm the executive vice president and the co-founder of The Golden Hack. Uh, I was a data analyst for Prism Resources, a data analyst for alumni at Laurier. I was the VBA encoding instructor for Prism Resources. A data analyst for Employment and Social Development Canada, and I'm now a software developer for Lakes Environmental Software. And, and I will be working as a software developer for Geotab over the summer. Uh, so my name is Natasha. Uh, I take computer science at UW and I do business here at Laurier. Uh, I'm also in my third year, uh, currently on co-op actually at Zebu. Um, I am the president and co-founder of The Golden Hack, and I've also done co-ops at TD, Staples, and I've worked part-time as the coding instructor at Prism last summer. Uh, yes, so uh, The Golden Hack, that's the organization that we started, is a hackathon here at Laurier. Hackathon is basically a overnight uh, like coding contest. So for the Golden Hack, we had approximately 100 students come from Laurier, Waterloo, University of Toronto, and other high schools uh, in the Laurier, in the Waterloo, <coughs> Waterloo area. So they came together and they formed uh, small teams and over a 24 hour period, they worked on challenges proposed by some of our corporate sponsors. So for example, Zebu, uh, which is a secure messaging startup in Waterloo, they proposed uh, making like a secure version of uh, like an application or product, Deloitte Digital, uh, Deloitte Digital Labs, they proposed a challenge around identifying high growth startups in the Waterloo area. So after you came together and you built this, like a minimum viable product, you built like a user interface, you built some back end, and then you created kind of like a business research case. You then presented to a group of judges from our corporate sponsors. We approximately had uh, about, a one, about 100 people attend and we approximately had about 20 groups present. So I tend to have a problem where I like to talk a lot, a lot of things and come up with a lot of great ideas for businesses, clubs, side projects, 
But the main problem is that I never actually follow through on those things. I kind of just talk about them a lot and then do nothing. And about a year and a half ago now, I was talking to one of my friends in Byte, in Laz, and I was telling her how I was like, oh, I should start this fintech club at Laurier. It'd be so cool. We could like have a bunch of talks and then like run a hackathon and it'd be amazing and like so fun, blah, blah, blah. And like this is at the point where I've already told her about the other three companies that I wanted to start and the other six side projects that I was never actually going to do. And she kind of stopped me and she was like, you know, you have a lot of ideas, but you should really try following through on one of them because you don't ever actually do that part of the process. And I was like, yikes, I probably should actually follow through on something or I'm just going to end up with a bunch of ideas and nothing on my resume. So from that conversation, I was like, OK, I need to focus on something and like kind of forget all my other ideas and just like follow through on the whole process. So I decided to start the Golden Hack, which is the hackathon that me and Rim co-founded, um, which is why the theme of our talk today is just do it. Um, Having a lot of ideas is great. Even having one idea is awesome, but they're pretty much worthless unless you actually put the work in to make it happen. Um, and so the thing that you need to create something out of nothing <coughs> is that momentum, the momentum that you get from just doing it one step at a time. So once I decided to start the hackathon, I realized that I knew literally nothing I had been to two hackathons at the time, and I had only been an executive on one club. I was on LASSOC in first year, or second year. Um, and I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. So I started out by just basically Googling things and trying to do my best to figure out, like, how do you start a hackathon? Do you need, like, a lot of support? How much time does it take? How many people do you need to run one? Um, and the first person that I actually think I talked to seriously through Facebook was the founder of L Hacks, which was a hackathon run at Laurier the year before I started school. So I think it was three years ago now. They ran, or ran by Phi, actually, um, three years ago. And I basically talked to him because I was like, why wasn't it run in my first year? And are they going to run? I was in second year at the time. I was like, are you guys going to run one this year? Um, do I have to worry about like scheduling conflicts? Should I just like help you guys instead of starting my own? Um, and like from that conversation, I got a lot of good insights on like the administration at Laurier and who to go to for help and how much help I needed myself because the hard part about Phi running a hackathon at the time uh, was that they were focusing on so many different things that it was really hard for them um, to like plan a huge event because I don't know if any of you guys have heard of Hack the North but that's a 48 hour hackathon at UW and they raise a lot of money for the event and they've been running for six years and they have like a huge team that runs it so having smaller hackathons in like the Waterloo region is sometimes harder to get them built up um, and like I definitely learned about some of those challenges from him and then I decided to uh, talk to the founder of Starter Hacks, which is another hackathon at UW, um, and just basically ask, like, since she, like, founded that and had kept going, I asked her about, like, who I should be talking to, how I get in contact with Major League Hacking, which is basically, like, the huge, like, sponsor, kind of, of all of these hackathons. They basically put their label on hackathons and it gives them a little bit more prestige and they help them out in other little ways. Um, but there was like a lot of knowledge that like I needed to gain through a research, pro research process. And I got to a point after like three weeks of researching in the middle of exams because I was procrastinating studying um, that I realized I needed help and I couldn't do all of this research on by myself, especially if I wanted to run a hackathon 10 months later. So I reached out to Ram. Uh, so one of the first things that we started to look for was like a place on campus to actually host a hackathon. So there isn't actually a process at Laurie for booking rooms like 24-7. So we're hoping to do it in LAS because it's a very nice building, there's lots of study spaces. So we emailed the senior administrative officer for LAS and we said, you know, can we host like this computer science like programming contest in your building? You know, he got back to us you know, relatively quickly within like two days telling us that no, like you can't stay overnight in our like very expensive, very nice building. And then you should email science and maybe they'll let you do it, right? So we write this email to the science faculty and we're like, can we use your building overnight? And they get back to us within like 15 minutes. They're like, no, <laughs> you should contact business. 
because they might let you use their building. So after a much longer process where we reached out to professors and then we dropped in randomly into the dean, business dean's office, we eventually convinced them to uh, like allow us to start this process of uh, getting access to Lazarus Hall. And apparently there is, there is a way that you can book it. We did. We did. Uh, so getting help. There, when you're trying to work on a project, especially if it's valuable, there's lots of people with similar interests. For example, we reached out to several professors. Uh, Dr. McNally, who's our faculty advisor, he's a finance professor in the faculty of business, who is really helpful for getting us to book the room. Of course, we reached out to Phi and LDSS, who also have similar interests at Laurier. There's a bunch of like little organizations. There's the Lazarus Institute, who's a whose CEO is like a venture capitalist and a professor here. There's other Laureate professors at the Schlegel Center, et cetera, et cetera. So when you're, so this is really an opportunity to find people that might be interested in you and that would be interested in helping you out. So building a brand and reputation, especially when you're getting started, a lot of times it's, you don't really have anything to show, but the fact that you're eager, the fact that you're forward looking, and the fact that you're, you come off as professional, something that's really important. So we would just randomly email these professors, you know, asking if we could just talk to them, asking if there's anything that they could do, anything that like there would be a, like an area of overlap. Something that we also found was really important throughout the process was building a really great team. Uh, obviously, two people was not enough to run the entire event on our own. So we ended up, by the time we ran the event this past October, with 23 total members on the team. Um, and that was people helping out with our financial situation, people getting us sponsors, um, people doing our website. Uh, like we have a whole tech team, which was really, really great at marketing operations that ran like all the event planning um, and something that was really important and that we learned very quickly from talking to other hackathons was that spending 24 hours with people that you don't like really sucks. So we really, at least me and Ram as leaders of the team, we really wanted to focus on team building, getting everyone to try to get along, make friends from the team. So we did things like socials, we did a cottage retreat as a team. Um, we just like planned a like, bunch of stupid icebreakers and stuff to get people to try to like bond as much as possible. Um, and it definitely think helped, or I think that it helped in like the success of the event for sure, because you wanna support your friends and you wanna help out as much as possible. And also having people that are dedicated and also talented and um, determined to get things done really, really helps you in the long run. Like our VP of operations, which is basically like the person who handles the day of planning. So like booking rooms, organizing where everything's gonna be, doing the schedule. She had run a hackathon for three years in high school um, in Toronto at her high school. And so she had just like a fountain of knowledge and was extremely like dedicated to the idea of starting something new. Um, and that definitely benefited us for the day of. So another thing that we had to deal with was handling stress. Uh, throughout the process, being it being our first year running this event, not only did we have to build our reputation and get people to trust us to run the event, we also had to convince companies to give us money for basically nothing. We had no proof that we could run the event. No one actually believed, well like, they could have believed from what we were saying, but we had like no statistics, uh, we had no pictures, we had no like, just proof of anything. So the hardest part of our first year was definitely getting money, which caused a lot of stress on the team. I think we got our entire budget amount a week and a half before the event, and we ordered our t-shirts for the event a week before and got them warm on the Saturday morning of the actual event. So a lot of things were very stressful. Um, we were told by the Dean's office that we were going to have to cancel at one point, I think a month before the event, which was just not great to deal with. Six thousand dollars while we were having a meeting about whether or not there would be food at the event. Yeah, we were like considering cutting the event by like six hours, like dealing with this where it goes back to having a strong team. Thank God we had people that were competent and were getting their shit together. It was great. 
Um, but we definitely had to work under a lot of stress. Uh, something that really helped us was preparing ahead of time. Like I said, we had our VP of operations who had run three hackathons before. She was insane with planning everything to a detail. It was great. There was a million Excel sheets. Amazing. There was a whole volunteer schedule. Um, everything that was in our power, like we kept it organized. We had like files to make sure that like everything was sorted correctly. Um, and we also did like a lot of talking out stressful situations. So we're very active on Slack as a team. Um, we would have meetings weekly leading up to the event and just have calls whenever we needed to talk to specific people. Um, and also just like remembering that we weren't alone because we did have a team of 23 people and we also had Professor McNally to back us up, which was very helpful. Um, but yeah, handling stress, like just being able to talk to people definitely helps, like even talking to people that weren't part of the event um, to help us like get through some very stressful situations. Uh, it definitely helped out a lot in the end. Uh, so we also had to learn from some mistakes. Obviously running it our first year, not everything was perfect. Like I said, we didn't get money till very, very late, which probably we could have fixed if we had done some things differently earlier in the year. Um, and it's also very easy to forget details when there's a million things to focus on. We didn't have any best practices. We just had other hackathons that we had talked to and how they did things. So we kind of just had to like wing a lot of things and come up with our own processes for stuff, like our judging process could have been better. So this year we have a plan to make it better. Um, and something that helped with making things better for this year, for next October, is we like kept, wrote down all the things that we thought could have been improved. Uh, and we had a briefing meeting to do that after the hackathon. So I think about a week after the hackathon, um, I got the whole team together and we sat down and we were like, okay, what was good? and what was bad and how can we fix that for next year? Do we have any ideas? What could we just change to make things easier on ourselves? Maybe it was fine, but lots of ways to improve, especially with the first year event. And the first time you do any project, there's always gonna be things that you can improve for next time. <laughs> so when, you, when we first started this, like we never expected this to be like such a, like, obviously in retrospect is, it was eventually going to end up something like this, but when I first started, you know, I didn't expect you know to have like a forty-person team of such a large event. But you just take that one first step, and you take the other for other step, and eventually you're just running toward this you know goal that you could have never imagined you know a year ago or two years ago. One more slide. Ah, uh, yes. So, what's next? This year, I'm going to advertise just a little bit. Um, we're running another hackathon next October so there's still a bit of time until then but we now have a 40 person team which is just insane compared to last year um, and we're also running a tech meetup on March 20th in Lazaridis Hall um, just to like introduce everyone to more events that we can run and keep building our reputation um, so you guys should definitely all come out to that uh, but now I guess we'll open up the floor to questions I know that was kind of unstructured, but if you guys are curious about any past work experience or the hackathon or ideas for starting projects, feel free to ask. This is your time. Thank you. Oh, go ahead. Do you usually have a set process for coming up with ideas or is it like a sporadic thing? That's a great question. Um, I'm personally, when I think of something, I try to write it down because I find like this activity is really hard because when you're told to like think of ideas, you don't like just come up with things. That's not usually how it's work. It's like when you're at Christmas and someone's like, what do you want for Christmas? You're like, nothing. I can't think of anything. So I try to like, whenever I have like a random idea, I have like 16 notes in my phone where I've written down random things. Um, but I think it also helps just to have like group sessions because that's always fun or like just try to force yourself to be put in a lot of random situations. I don't know, Ram, do you have any processes for coming up with ideas? Um. I don't know, sometimes if I have a problem, I'll like sit down, think about it, I'll write down like what I want, like what does the solution look like, potentially like what are ways to get there. I feel like if I do that, I might not come up with it immediately, but you know, over the next week, you know, it'll be in the back of my head, and I might come up with something. What's that? So earlier on, you guys mentioned how one of the biggest problems was like, figuring out where to start and what to do. Mm -hmm. And you said one of the 
biggest ways you got help was by reaching out to someone over Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. So my question would be, how do you know who to network with and like how to contact people and what people to reach out to? And like subsequently, like with your team, did yeah. people reach out to you or did you have to go network with other people and like take the initiative to make that team? Yeah, so big question. Um, honestly, with reaching out to people on like Facebook or LinkedIn, or whatever, like this applies to job hunting as well. You kind of just have to not be afraid to reach out to too many people and also talk to the wrong people. Something that I try to do when I'm running, I'm writing an introductory message is like, especially if you like, I'll stalk them on everything, like LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever, and then I choose the thing that if it feels like a more casual conversation, I'll go to Facebook. If it feels like a very like I want a job, go to LinkedIn. Um, but something that I try to start with is why I want to talk to them because you should kind of know from Facebook and LinkedIn like okay, this is a good person to talk to for this reason. Uh, with Professor McNally, my first email to him, because I was in his finance class in first year, and um, I really liked him as a person, so I reached out to him on email, and I was like, hey, I went to all of your classes, I was in the front row with the bright red hair, um, I just wanted to say that I have this idea, and we're struggling a lot with it right now with the administration, can you help us, or can you direct us to someone who can help us? Because at least then, if you're not contacting the right person, they might have the knowledge of who you should talk to next. Um, in terms of the team, you can. How did we find our team for the first year? Um, how did we find our team? So first started with a couple friends. So like obviously first I reached out to Ram, um, and then I got a couple other of my friends on board, um, and then we hired a VP of marketing through just like word of mouth. We kind of were just like, who wants to start a I brand? With yeah, okay, so Ram, so it was all like through friends for like the VP team, and then we released applications and we just tried to advertise on Facebook, even though no one knew who we are, and we got about 30 applications, which like wasn't terrible for like no one having any idea what we were actually doing, um, and then this year we got 95 applications for, and we ended up with 40 people on the team, because I think like 10 people came back from last year. Um, so yeah, it's just like a bunch of different channels and like not being afraid to just like throw yourself out there and talk to whoever. It was very rambly, did I answer your question? Yeah, thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> cool. Oh, go ahead. Uh, you said that you were, oh, what was your name again? <laughs> Natasha. Uh, you, you were in like two other hackathons before? Yeah, so I had only, go ahead, what's your question? <laughs> Uh, so was there anything that really stood out as something that you wanted for Golden Hat or like didn't want for Golden Hat? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I had only gone to um, Mick Hacks, but I'd gone to it twice, um, which is McGill's Hackathon because I was like, yo, free trip to Ottawa, I'm going to go there. Um, so what I had really liked about it was just like, the culture of like a hackathon was really cool. The fact that they were running workshops and when I was in first year and I went, I had no idea what I was doing. Me and my friend literally went just to go to Ottawa and we were like, we're just gonna go to a Python workshop. And like, that was basically all we did for the weekend. But I thought it was really cool, like how they had prizes for like a bunch of different things and like how they had companies that you could network with. And like, that was really awesome. Um, and then like things that like we really wanted to fix that I thought were not so great was like the flow of people was really hard. Cause they had like, I think, the last time I went, they had 600 people, which like then it, it's just like really hard to deal with that many people. But like that was something I wanted to have like really good like flows, so there wasn't like lineups for food, um, and like yeah, it was just. I think that was it. I can't think of anything else. Great. Does anyone else have any questions? Okay, wonderful. Thank you for listening.